if you feel like you're doing all the right things on track, nailing all the apexes, hitting all the marks, but you're still seconds off the fastest guys on track, chances are that they've got a good understanding of slip angle and you might not. Let's look at an example of slip angle in action. Here's a hairpin at Barcelona, a fairly slow first gear corner where effective slip angle is fairly easy to spot. If we watch in slow motion, you'll notice that the front of the car is directly on top of the corner apex, right on the painted line. But the rear end of the car is still a good six inches away from it, and it holds that gap throughout most of the corner. When the rear of the car is swung out like this in a really subtle but stable way, that's slip angle taking place. Slip angle is a really counterintuitive element of racing which decrees that in order to go around a corner as fast as possible, you actually have to engage the car into a tiny amount of sliding, almost like drifting, but in an amount that's almost unseen. Mastering the concept of slip angle is one of the cornerstones of fast lap times and because it's totally against common sense, it's something that you might not discover all on your own. On the other hand, if you've got natural talent, you might already be nailing it, but not realising what it is. Either way, it benefits everybody watching new and old to know that it's there. So before we get really into it, I'm not a race car dynamicist or qualified in the field of motorsport, but you can learn tons from a book by people who are. This is a Skip Barber book, which I refer to often for a sanity check. A brilliant resource with so much good stuff in it. If you're interested in going faster, then this is definitely one for you. A link to it is in the description and it's worth your time, brilliant bedtime reading. In simplified terms, slip angle itself describes how many degrees difference there is between where the tyres are facing and where the track is going as you drive along. In other words, how many degrees of angle there is on your tyres compared to the direction you're heading. It's something that matters and is really important to real race car dynamics. You may not know, for example, the strange truth that tyres actually generate the most grip when they are put on the brink of losing it. And when you were practising or learning, starting out, you would have heard that sliding is bad, and yeah, that is true, but that might have paralysed you into driving cautiously, avoiding any sliding whatsoever, and never discovering the extra cornering speeds you get when you do tow that blurry line between grip and loss of grip. This is why this is so counterintuitive. In just the right doses, this sliding actually results in cornering that's much faster than if you were to go around it without any slip at all. So at what slip angle does a car corner at its absolute best? In a typical road racing situation such as GT cars, the optimum amount of slip angle to get around a corner as fast as possible is somewhere under 10 degrees. The sweet spot differs between car types tyre compounds and all sorts of variables, but generally speaking, the ideal slip angle is not a lot at all, very subtle. Any more than that, and the grip given by the tyre drops off a cliff and results in either a bad understeer or a sudden spin, depending on which tyres on which end of the car suffer excessive slip angle first. So what is the actual point of identifying this slip angle phenomenon? What's the use? Well, like anything, sim racing is something that is made easier the more that you know about it. If you know that a smidge of slip angle, a little bit of sliding, is the fastest way to get through a corner, you won't be trying to avoid it and misinterpreting it as a mistake. And you'll know that you're doing the right thing by practicing doing it and learning more about it. In all of the clips seen up to now in the background, you'll see slip angle happening by watching how the gap between the corner apex and the rear of the car is bigger than the gap on the front. If you go back and watch replays of your best lap times, you might find that you can see this happening for you as well, whether you're aware of it at the time or not. It's really handy to visualise what's happening underneath the car when you corner like this. When you're approaching the corner, the car is neutrally balanced and all four tyres are gripping the track equally. When you brake, the nose of the car is pressed down and the back of the car goes light. Then, when you roll the car into the turn as well, you're also rolling the weight onto the outside of the car too. This leaves the inside rear tyre with very little contact with the ground, which reduces the amount of grip total at the back of the car. With all that work to do and not much downward pressure on the track to do it with, the rear starts to enter a state of slip angle, and it's this that gives the car the ability to rotate faster than it could if it was completely glued to the track. 
The big challenge here of course is not overdoing it on corner entry by braking or turning too hard and overwhelming the grip at the rear of the car, which usually ends like this. Get it right however and you'll be cutting the apex perfectly. One thing that definitely makes slip angle easier to achieve consistently is a good car setup. So if your simulation of choice has a setup shop for you to get verified good setups for a particular car and track combo, that is going to help. A bad car setup, such as the iRace and Baselines for example, are going to make it difficult to practice holding slip angle. So make sure you're not artificially making it 10 times harder with a homemade configuration. I can't create a setup to save my life, so I always turn to setup shops for tried and true configs. Okay, so by now we've all got the picture. Small slide good, big slide bad. So here's some simple onboard footage along with pedal and steering wheel telemetry to illustrate how you would bring your car into a state of stable and effective slip angle during cornering. The first thing you'll want to pay close attention to is the brake pedal. You'll notice that there's the initial big chunk of brake as we approach the corner, then as we turn in the pedal is relaxed but not all the way. The purpose of doing this is to keep the nose of the car squeezed into the ground while simultaneously making the rear of the car lighter, which promotes harder cornering. Some of you might be looking at this and thinking, well isn't that just trail braking? Yeah, it is. The whole point of trail braking is to coax the car into a good slip angle and turn harder. Trail braking is how you do it. Slip angle is why you do it. When the car does find that fuzzy moment of slip angle, your steering might feel a bit vague and mushy. The car almost seems to turn by itself initially, whilst you're merely there to give it little corrections in order to prevent the back end from getting too loose as you descend upon the apex. This isn't all that surprising when you consider that you're essentially inducing a controlled small scale slide whereby the tyres are flexing and twisting under the demands of what's happening at their very limit. Your job is to keep that slide sustained as long as possible but contained with your steering input and your pedals. At times you'll storm into the corner too quickly and the rear will feel like it's about to come around. If that happens just counter it with some opposite lock on the steering but also add a gentle touch of throttle to shift some weight back onto the rear of the car and also cancel out the drag on the rear tyres from the engine braking, but I do mean gentle. At some point the corner entry stage will end and now you're entering the middle phase of the corner. This is where you need to shift the weight of the car away from the nose again and back onto the rear of the car by releasing the brake entirely and smoothly phasing in the power. Ideally this switch from brake into power is swift but smooth so as to maintain the rotational force you created with your trail braking. If you're too steady with the throttle you'll kill the slip angle by unintentionally stabilising the rear of the car. In any other situation that's a good thing, but in the middle of a corner it will chop your car's cornering ability and cost you time. Equally if you overpower the rear tyres with too big a swing from brake to throttle, the back end will probably step out on you and you risk a messy departure from the corner. In essence the formula of cornering is roughly summarised. In the first half of the corner you get slip angle by shifting the weight forward onto the nose and unloading the rear tyres in order to allow the back of the car to trail out by just a few degrees without overcooking it and spinning out. In the second half of the corner you maintain slip angle by picking the right moment to switch over and add the right amount of power to keep the back end floating without accidentally killing the slip angle by being too slow about it or breaking the grip by being too quick. On corner entry the car is pulled around by the nose, on corner exit the car is pushed from behind. If you get it right the steering will feel quite light and vague, it won't feel 100% comfortable. Slip angle is a hard thing to get right all the time, that's what makes racing so challenging. It only takes tiny variations in accuracy to make one corner perfect and the next one pretty sloppy. One thing that makes cornering on the edge easier is better equipment. The primary way you feel the rear of the car phasing into a state of ideal slip angle is through your arms. And the better the equipment, the better you can detect when the tyres are close to giving way. I've progressed my own hardware along the months and years and observed this to be true. So check the suggested videos at the end of this one to hear more about that. Another thing that helps in the fight against spins on corner entry is brake bias. If you find yourself practicing and you're constantly spinning out on corner entry even with a good setup from a setup shop, you might just need to dial the brake bias forward to give you a bit more safety when you turn in. 
Likewise, if you just can't get the car to get that rotation that you're looking for no matter what, you can dial the brake bias backwards to make the car's attitude more aggressive. I've got a whole video on this, so check the links at the end. Slip angle is almost invisible, it's hard to see, but its effect on lap times is absolutely huge. There isn't a single top flight racer who hasn't at some point learnt what it's all about. And I'm hoping that by putting a spotlight on it, some of you that have never realised this happens before may take to the track and look to uncover big jumps in pace. And those of you with more experience might find it an inspiration to push a little bit harder. And that's it. Cheers for watching. I urge anyone with corrections, advice or questions to stick them in the comments below for others that are visiting this video too. Subscribe if you can spare a click and I'll really appreciate it. Thanks again.